I believe this will be the ninth video in the Lessons in Logic series. And actually, I just decided to throw away something like 13 videos. Uh, I'm going back to before the categorical logic unit and finishing up the intro unit in a more orderly fashion uh, than when I had first recorded uh, those 13 videos. Um, I'm going to do finish the intro unit in a more orderly way and then do the categorical logic unit in a more orderly way. And I think things will be a lot clearer. Now, in this video, which I think will be very short, I just want to go over some of the branches of logic. Logic is the study of methods for determining whether the premises of an argument provide good enough support for their conclusion. And there's a basic division in different kinds of arguments. There are those that are meant to prove their conclusion given the premises. That is to say, arguments that are meant to demonstrate that the conclusion must be true if the premises are true. And those are deductive arguments. And then there's arguments that are meant to demonstrate uh, only that the conclusion is probable. Or maybe I should say uh, arguments that are meant only to provide good probabilistic support for their conclusion. In other words, if the premises are true, it is likely but not certain that the conclusion is true. Those are inductive arguments. And accordingly, inductive logic studies inductive arguments and deductive logic studies deductive arguments, or to be a little more precise, inductive logic is that branch of logic where we study some methods for evaluating inductive arguments to see if they're good enough. And in deductive logic, we study some methods for evaluating deductive arguments to see if they're good enough. Or put differently, in inductive logic, we study some methods for trying to determine whether the premises of an argument successfully provide good probabilistic support for their conclusion, uh, if not 100% guaranteed certainty support. And in deductive logic, we're interested in whether arguments provide guaranteed 100% certainty support. We're interested in whether the argument is such that the premises make their conclusion 100% certain, such that it's not possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. In deductive logic, uh, nearly the only thing we're interested in is whether it's possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false at the same time. If it is possible, uh, then an argument fails to achieve its goal as a deductive argument. And um, uh, if it's not possible and it succeeds at its goal, it's a good deductive argument. And using the technical terminology from logic class, it is valid. So deductive logic is all about tests for validity, tests to see whether the premises of a conclusion guarantee their whether the premises of an argument guarantee their conclusion. And inductive logic is about tests for whether the premises of an argument render their conclusion merely probable. So those are the two basic branches of logic. And deductive logic has these two sub-branches that we are interested in in this series, proposition logic and, and categorical logic. Proposition logic is sometimes called statement logic. I'll probably uh, absentmindedly switch back and forth between those two terms. I usually prefer to say proposition logic. Categorical logic deals with arguments by analyzing them according to their categories. Proposition logic deals with arguments by analyzing them according to their statements. To, um, uh, to try to state this a little more carefully, um, here's an argument that uses categorical logic. All, all philosophers are people who seek wisdom. Uh, Confucius is a philosopher, therefore Confucius seeks wisdom. That is an argument that employs relationships among categories of things, the categories of people who are Confucius, the categories of people who are philosophers, and the categories of people who seek wisdom. It uh, analyzes the relationships among the categories to demonstrate its conclusion. Here is a different kind of argument. If, uh, if it is raining, then the grass is wet. It is raining, therefore the grass is wet. This argument works by analyzing the relationships, or maybe I should say uh, using. This argument draws on the relationships among statements. And in statement logic, proposition logic, what you do is you break an argument down into its smallest statements and the pieces of the argument that connects them. And then you study the relationship among the statements in the argument, see if the conclusion is guaranteed. In a categorical logic, you do the same thing, but with categories rather than statements. You break the argument down into its terms, uh, terms being nouns or noun phrases that stand for categories, and you analyze the relationship among them to determine whether 
uh, whether the premises of the argument would guarantee their conclusion. So in other words, with statement logic, proposition logic, what you do is something like this. You reduce an argument to a structure like if x, then y, x, therefore y. And then you say, hey, that's uh, one of those special kinds of arguments in, in proposition logic that we call the modus ponens argument. Modus ponens is valid, so this is a valid argument. And in categorical logic, you analyze the argument to find not uh, if x then y, but all x are y, all y are z, therefore all, uh, all x are z. Uh, that is one of those special arguments in categorical logic we call a barbarous syllogism, therefore it's a valid argument because barbarous syllogisms are valid, all right? Uh, in other words, in categorical logic, we break down an argument into its terms that represent categories and examine the relationships among the terms. And in proposition logic, we break down an argument into its small sentences and we analyze the relationship among the sentences. So in proposition logic, you have a bunch of small statements or sentences and you look at the relationship among them and you have to talk about if, then, and, or, things like that. In categorical logic, you look at the relationships among the categories and you would uh, in addition to the, the terms that stand for those categories, look at only things like all, some, no, and are and are not, because your basic uh, propositions in categorical logic are going to be things like, uh, actually your basic propositions in categorical logic are only going to, are going to be just one of these three things, uh, all, X or Y, no X or Y, some X or Y, and some X are not Y. Those are the only four basic uh, shapes of a proposition that can happen in categorical logic. All right, now I'm perhaps talking more than is entirely necessary at this time. I was going to make this a short video. I have characteristically failed at that. So proposition logic studies arguments by looking at, uh, by breaking them down into their constituent statements and looking at the relationship among the statements, categorical logic, studies arguments by breaking them down into their constituent terms and studying the relationship among the terms, where terms are the nouns or noun phrases that stand for categories. And I said one thing that was not very precise. Let me uh, try to clarify that. If you watched earlier videos in this series, you've probably heard me say that a proposition is not the same thing as a sentence. Well, yes, that's true. Speaking loosely, you can say sentence and proposition and use them interchangeably, but technically, technically a sentence is not the same thing as a proposition. Uh, a sentence conveys a proposition, but a proposition uh, is not the same thing as a sentence. A proposition is that which a sentence conveys. Uh, just to illustrate very briefly, um, I could give you the proposition that the tea is cold. Actually, the teacup is empty. Let's go with that one. I give you the proposition that the teacup is empty. And I could give that proposition in any number of different sentences. I could just say the teacup is empty. Or I could say, there is no tea in my teacup. Or I could say, there's nothing in this teacup but, but air or something like that. And any of those would convey the proposition that the teacup is empty. Now, uh, another thing you might have noticed is that when I was talking about categorical logic, I said something about propositions uh, because, um, well, you still have propositions. You still have statements. Proposition logic analyzes arguments by breaking them down into their smallest statements. But you still have propositions, you still have statements in categorical logic. Confucius is a philosopher. Confucius seeks wisdom. Those are statements. Those are propositions. And in proposition logic, you might notice there are still terms representing categories. I said, uh, what was the example I gave? If it's raining, then the grass is wet. It is raining, therefore the grass is wet. You could break that down into constituent, uh, constituent categories. Um, days on which it's raining, days on which the grass is wet might be the categories you look at when you break down that proposition logic argument into its category, which is to say proposition logic and categorical logic are extremely useful uh, strategies for analyzing arguments, but they're still kind of connected. You can't fully separate categorical logic from proposition logic if you're going to do logic thoroughly. And we will not do logic thoroughly in this playlist. I have no intention of going further than basic proposition logic and basic categorical logic, but I want you to know that there is such a thing as predicate logic that goes beyond the basics and combines categorical logic and proposition logic. And if you ever get to um, 
not say a freshman level logic class in a university, but something beyond that, there's a very good chance you'll get to predicate logic. And the occasional freshman logic class might also go as far as, as predicate logic. Uh, I don't intend to in this channel. Uh, let me now try to give a summary of about one sentence and then see if I can shut up and wrap up this video since it was supposed to be short. The basic branches of logic can be understood in this way. There's inductive logic, the study, of methods for determining whether the premises of an argument successfully render their conclusion probable and deductive logic, the study of methods for determining whether the premises of an argument guarantee their conclusion, which has two sub branches, proposition logic, where we analyze arguments according to their constituent propositions in categorical logic, where we analyze logic, according, where we analyze arguments according to categorical logic, where we analyze arguments according to their constituent terms terms being those nouns or noun phrases that represent categories. And then there's another slightly more advanced branch of deductive logic that combines proposition logic and categorical logic. Now, this is all very basic. There's more. I haven't even mentioned modal logic. You know, there's other stuff, but these are some of the basic branches of logic. And it's already more than we'll cover in this series. And um, that was well over one sentence unless we had a lot of semicolons. But anyway, Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and we'll do some more logic next time.